What's going on, y'all? Welcome to another great episode of The Stoop, where we talk hoops, hoops, and more hoops, man. I'm your guy, TJ, and before we get into it, I got to shout out my great people over there at 24-7, my guy, Dave. Y'all see this right here, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, if you need your own customized ball with your logo on for your tournaments, your sports gatherings, your sports events, listen, my man, 24-7, David Morrison, he got you. So check them out, man, 24-7. Dave, we appreciate you guys. I got to introduce my player partner, my mother, uh, my brother from another, my man, Kev P. Kev P, talk to the people, bro. As always, it's a pleasure to be here. Hey, Kev P, you can do the honors if you want, man. Hey, listen, this guy right here is special yeah. to me. I've known him for quite some time. As I say, we used to kick it in the sandbox back in the day. He's been a media vet. He's done it all. Catch him in the source. He's been on MTV. He has his own podcast that he co-hosts with a young man, Khalil, named The Box Out. I can go on and on for days, but without further ado, I'm going to holler out my man, Jason Corden. Welcome to the show, sir. Yeah, man. Welcome, Jason. Welcome. Welcome, Jason. Yeah. Gentlemen, the pleasure and the honor, man. You guys have been doing your thing for about a year. Congrats on yeah. hitting that anniversary. You know, a lot of podcasts, you know, they come in the game and they leave before five episodes and then it will stick around. But you guys are definitely doing your thing and I definitely support that. Appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. So without further ado, I'm going to kick this off right away. Um, you've been in the source for quite a few years. Yep. Spent some time at MTV as well. As a media vet, talk to us about some of the changes that you've seen firsthand in regards to African-American advancements, as well as representation. I'm coming right off the top of the hall. Well, you're coming with the hard ones. I like that. Right um, off the top. First thing I would say is definitely been a void that's been, you know, being filled. A lot of cats out there, you know, are showing their merit in terms of like behind the scenes, in front of the cameras. Um, the player movement right now, you know, that I kind of want to say LeBron spearheaded. So um, between behind the scenes and in front, it's definitely moving in the right direction. We need more representation. And I want to say it's happening more so in the NBA, more so in college in terms of like, you know, African-American coaches being hired. And there's more GMs across the board just being able to, you know, let them run their, do their thing without interruptions from the management above. So it's a good thing. Still a lot of work to be done, but I'm um, looking to see what's going on down, down the line. So I'm happy you, um, you brought up some of the movements in the NBA with Brian and someone and so forth. And a large part of this show, besides hoops, as we know, mm -hmm. is the culture and what accompanies it. And often that means that you got to speak out on social injustices and things of that nature. Sometimes on a grand scale, sometimes smaller. Draymond, for instance, he spoke out. He's no speaker. To, he's no stranger to speaking out. Um, he gave his opinion on double standards of players requesting trades and management seeking trades for players. In a recent article with the source, mm -hmm. he spoke on that. And uh, the question is, if the narrative is ever going to change, how do we, as media people, and how do they go about doing so? I think for it to change, we got to be more susceptible to what they're talking about. Like, for instance, Charles Barkley kind of went on the deep end on the Bill Simmons podcast and pretty much said Draymond sounds annoying. And you can't really say that because unlike Barkley, you know, you had a preference of where you wanted to go. So like, you know, the same thing happened to you back in the days where you had to sit out before Philly eventually traded you to, to mm -hmm. Phoenix. So I feel like today's athlete, they're more aware of what's going on. And you guys probably notice this a lot. You know, it's a big trend going on in terms of like back in the days, you know, you followed your Bulls, I followed my Knicks. It ain't like that no more. You following the players. So, you know, a lot of mm -hmm. fans, are, they are so aware of what goes on behind the scenes. For You know, for LeBron, LeBron could have stayed in Cleveland, built it up, but he know he had to go to Miami to learn the skills from Riley and D-Wade and learn. Then he learned how to be a winner. Then he was able to go back to Cleveland. Then he was able to go to LA and pretty much do his thing. We see it in football with Tom Brady. People thought Tom Brady was a system quarterback. He clearly showed he's not right now. Yes. So, so it's one of those things where, like, I 100% agree with Draymond. But at the same time, you got to save that for the collective bargaining, brother. You know, you don't mm. got the leverage right now. But come collect the CBA time, that's when you put it all on the table. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, TJ. So... Hey, Jay, listen, man, I want to thank you for coming to the stoop, man, where we talk everything from hoops to culture and everything. But I'll talk about culture. You've been a part of two synonymous brands when we talk about the culture. We talk about NTV as well as talking about the source. What do those two brands mean to the culture, in your opinion? I want to say, well, MTV used to be for the culture. But honestly, in my opinion, they're not for the culture anymore. They're about, you know, their corporation. It's pretty much like 
going on like the ringer podcast and you've got to be filtered to what you're saying but mm -hmm. we come to the stoop we pretty much talk whatever right. so that's pretty sure. much what the source is like you know working from the source and working for mtv whereas you know you kind of muzzle the mtv you can't really speak your opinion even sway sway is the homie he to, to a certain degree is limited to what he got to say until he goes on to his show on satellite radio mm -hmm. so you know working with a black media like the source it's no filter you pretty much say what you want to say and I want to say today's athletes, as well as the hip hop stars, they they mess with that. They'll ex they rather mess with you than to go to like, the go to the MTV or go to BET, which is all under the Viacom umbrella, right. where they know they're hitting an audience, but they're not hitting the real fans. You know what I mean? So it's like that's what I'm noticing between the source and like Viacom in general. Like the fans, the feedback you're gonna get, it's gonna be so authentic. It's you know. People want to hear the truth. They want to hear the rawness. Got you, got you, uh, got you. I, I, I want to go back for a second because you, you you mentioned um, Barkley's response to Draymond. Mm -hmm. And you also talk about being filtered with MTV versus more so a show like what we do where you can just say whatever it is that you feel. Um, Barkley kind of gets a little bit of backlash from some of the people such as our show or other places that want us to have that platform and be able to speak and say what we want to say. Right. But truth be told, um, it can be interpreted as the old man, get off my lawn kind of syndrome that we always give some of these older players flag for. But uh, Barkley has as much right to express himself as Draymond does. What's your take on that and his comments to be specific? I was a little surprised that he said that because I feel like, you know, Barkley and Shaq is starting to get like Barkley a little bit where they're not supporting the younger players. So they're starting to feel like they're starting to feel like the get off my lawn kind of guys. But um, I was only taken back because they seemed like they mended a little bromance. They had a little bromance going on. They did. Draymond, Draymond appearing on TNT and it's, everything was seemed all love. So I was kind of shocked that he said that because I didn't find them to come off as annoying. I kind of find them coming off as, OK, this is what we're all talking about, but no one wants to address it. So I'm going to address it. Right. Great. Great. Got it, T. So. Yo, Jay, it's, it's important that we talking about this. I'm going to stay chimed in on this one. So I, I call it the good cop, bad cop. So we see the Shacks and we see the, the Barclays trying to portray the good cop because they're the OGs or the elder statesmen now. Um, but we got to remember Chuck was the guy that said he wasn't a role model back in the day in a Nike commercial and mm. also recovered mm. a sports illustrator with the chains he had tied up. But we're going to disregard that, Chuck, but we was watching. But anyway, let's do it like this. Good cop, bad cop. We got the OGs versus the bad guys who really keep it honest. We talking about the Perks, the Kendrick Perkins. We talking about Matt Barnes and we talking about Stack. We talking about Steven Jackson. Why is there a fine line between them guys and uh, the OGs in terms of where everybody stands with today's new players? Because we were real um, critical about things that are said in the media and especially not too long ago, Shaq about a week ago said what he said about Donovan Mitchell. So what is the fine line between that? Because everybody played in the league. I just think they're that far more removed from the situation. Whereas, you know, Perks and Barnes and these guys, they kind of see, they kind of, they were playing back in that day and they're kind of like right now, not too far removed. So they kind of stand the player's plight right now, in, per se. So I think with Barkley and Shaq, it's more like, not, they, they're trying to motivate, but they're doing it from a place of love, but it's coming out for hate because that's just the generation, that's a generational gap. Mm -hmm. So, you know, today's generation, they don't really take criticism especially from the older vets who feel like, well, you know, you guys been in the locker room, you guys been in these situations, so you shouldn't really address us as such. We're not trying, we're not out here doing our own thing. You know, you kind of support us a little bit more considering, you know, the guys like Stephen A, who's never been in the league, you know, those, I feel like those are supposed to be the bad cops, not more so Shaq, drink, you know, wow. and guys like that. So I think that's where the disconnect occurs. Is there any, any one of the guys that I named that you personally like or you like that, they giving that right type of message. Um, anybody that stands out to you, or maybe somebody I didn't name, maybe it's a female um, right now in terms of journalism that is given given the real uh, day in and day out like we do. I definitely want to say you guys show remind me of all smoke. You know, those are my mm -hmm. guys. You guys kind of resemble that that whole tandem where you guys you know keep it unfiltered, say you know speak your truths, don't sugarcoat nothing. So I would say definitely Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson are definitely doing the thing right now. I still mess with Barkley in terms of, I just want to hear his takes, mm -hmm. but I'm really surprised at the direction Shaq's going. Got you. Okay. Listen, I, I, I value 
even though I don't necessarily agree. I value Chuck's takes on things because mm-hmm. there's always the flip side to everything. For every Malcolm, there's a Martin and so on right. and so forth. And so I, I don't necessarily discredit anything. I may not agree, like I said. I, I really think that Draymond and several other guys in the league, I, I could run down a whole list of people um, that use their platform to, to, to make a difference and say things. And then you always have guys... Like, for instance, you, Jay, you know me from back in the day. I was the biggest Jordan fan ever. But one of the biggest knocks he's had on him socially is the whole Republicans buy oh. sneakers too thing. We got to understand that, as you said, there's a generational gap. Mike kind of had to say those kind of things then because, let's face it, had he taken the same position as Braun and some of these other younger players take today, he gets blackballed. And it's right. because he took that he position... Up? Yeah, because he took that position then, although we may look at it in hindsight and say that wasn't a move, that provided the opportunity for the LeBrons and all the other guys to make the the, the, stink, the statements that they make currently. Or, so or, I don't, or, I don't or, want or that. Real quick, or did that provide him the opportunity on the Forbes list? Uh, um, no, there's no doubt about that. Okay. But like I said, had, had, had he made that choice to speak out then, as Bron and those guys did now, he's blackballed. He's not the Jordan we know today. And, and, and these guys now don't have the same platform because where he elevated to, that gave them that opportunity to do so after the fact. Am I wrong in that, Jay? No, I think you're, I think you're 100% correct on that because Jordan pretty much, he took that bullet so everyone else okay. could eventually become who they want to be. Like you said, he, had he not taken that stance, he wouldn't be an owner right now. That's right. The Jordan logo would not be anonymous with so much. would be dunking know, in a trash can. Pretty much. Pretty much. So <laughs> the reason why LeBron, these guys can do it now is because of Jordan, because of Kobe, because of D-Wade. You know what I'm saying? Because these guys put, you know, no filter, said what they had to say, and they pretty much leveled the playing field. So like LeBron, he's so he's so big right now. Even if you want to blackball him, you can't. That's right. It's, it's a totally different era. Totally I, still, I still respect it, fellas, and I'm going to be honest with you. This is going to be my real candor, and people might not like what I have to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. I still need a mic even then to say something, because Mike in the 90s, the Rodney King beating an acquittal alone should have made you say something. If you can sit there and replay that video cassette tape and watch a man be beaten like that in the middle of the street by police officers and don't say anything, I... I when I watched the last dance, I said, yeah, Mike, I get it, but I don't get it still because I can't sit there and watch that happen, that atrocity, and be like, I'm going to go out and play Cleveland tomorrow. No, no, I, I, I get what you're saying there. It, uh, um, for him to at least... Um, I, know, I, know it was, I know it was a tough era to speak out like yeah. that authentically because in the 90s, you really didn't have nobody have your back. Today, we got Melo, D-Wade, Bron, CP3, sent on the SB stage together as a unit. In the 60s, if you look at that iconic picture, where it's Lou Alcindor, it's, it's Jim Brown, it's Muhammad Ali sitting at the table collectively as a unit. In the 90s, Mike was by himself because Chuck, who knows what he was doing. But you still got to say something in that, in, in, that, in that time. You had to. Do, do, do we give Magic Johnson a pass? Because mm. remember, he was just as big at that particular time. He was bigger. And he, yeah, and, and, and opted not to say anything. The, he should, the, why, why, why does it all ride on Mike's shoulders? Magic was a, a, was a several time over a champion at the time. So was Isaiah. I just don't think. Um, I think it, there was it's too much. Exactly I, I think, what I said back then. Go ahead, go ahead Jack. Go ahead, Jack. Game. I, have, I have a take on that. I think it's because back then they were so, everybody was in their little corner. You know, Jordan was here, Ewing was here. I was, you know, this is Isaiah, true too. Magic, everybody was in the little corner. And if you look at other sports, there was, there was no big figure in the NFL back at that time that would able to like withstand the abuse and say something. So I felt like back then, it was a lot of isolation all across sports. Let, let, let me say this really quick, and this isn't hoops related, but it is. Muhammad Ali is one of the biggest figures we've ever had as an activist and as an athlete. Facts. Right. Look what they did to him. Now, mind you, he was able to come back and do his things, and there's a, there's a large gap between himself and Jordan in terms of years. But you can't look at that and ignore it because that's essentially what happens. Mm-hmm. Craig Hodges on a smaller scale, Mahmoud Abdul Rauf on a smaller scale. Although these guys are not Mike, you can absolutely look at them and go, well, if that happens, 
I get swallowed up in this whole thing and I get silenced and then nobody gets to hear it and the guys behind me don't get to say anything. Would Stern allow that to happen? Jay, I'm gonna let you kick this to you. Would Stern, knowing the money that Mike was generating at the time in the 90s, because he was a new fresh face as Isaiah, Larry, and Magic was on the back end of their career, Mike was the up and coming. Would Stern, and the identity of what he was trying to do in the late 70s and early 80s to take the, the smoke, drug, coke infested NBA and turn it around. Would he have let Mike get martyred like that, Jay? I'm curious. I think he would have. I think he would have. Oh. I think Stern, Stern's run, he used to run a tight ship. And you he used to get about the, the dress code. The dress code. I mean, I feel like the owner, I feel like Jordan had so much say over the ownership, but I feel like Stern would have been that voice of reason, like, we can't have you doing that, Mike. I'm sorry. You know, things like that. And then look at it in terms of like his best friend, Ahmad Bashan. He didn't say anything either. So like, I feel like, again, it's, the hill wasn't for Mike at the time. He's doing great things now, putting clinics all around Charlotte. Sure. You know, he's doing the thing. He's putting his money behind, you know, a Black Lives Matter, a lot of other movements. He's, he's doing the right thing now. So that's all that matters. You know, Malcolm Little became Malcolm X. Let Jordan become a mogul and a billionaire. And now he's investing back in the community. So I'm My all man, I'm so happy to hear you say that because... I'm going to transition real quick. Unless, TJ, you got something else you wanted to add real quick. Go. I got more for Jada. I'm going to come right back. I'm going to segue ahead. real quick because as a New Yorker, you endured many years of my <laughs> man Mike dominating your beloved Knicks. In oh, more yeah. recent years, you've suffered through some subpar seasons. As a fellow Brooklynite, have you converted since the Nets' arrival? Are you still a diehard Knicks fan? Are you split between the two? What, what's, the, what's the verdict? You know, I'm still split between the two because for as good as the Nets look, I'm more worried about, I'm more concerned about the development of Quickly and RJ. Mm. So okay. it's, it's one of those things where like, you know, like the Nets are right behind, you know, in our backyard, but it doesn't feel right rooting for them yet. Like I, if you was asking me which, which I would have better, I would have rooted more for the Jason Kidd Nets team back in oh. you know, 01, 02, 03 Ooh. over this Nets okay. team. Only because it doesn't feel right. Like, I feel like, you know, our whole childhood. Our you feel like they're still in your spotlight. Absolutely. You're like, don't let the Nets be the New York team I see win a championship first. Like, it won't feel right. Let me say this. I got it. Jay, do you agree with this? And Kev, you can chime in too. I blame, and I had a conversation with somebody, my name, name was a colleague of mine, and he does sports, and we're going to keep it off board with the name. But... Him and I had a dialogue maybe two weeks ago, and I said to him, I blame New Yorkers, New, excuse me, New Yorkers for the Knicks' mediocrity for this long. And the reason why I say that is because of this. You still went to the garden, you still bought apparel, you still allowed Dolan to rule with an iron fist, and you still put money on that man's pocket. Where was the boycotts? Where was not watching Channel 11? Where was not watching Yes Network? Where was not going to the game? We seen Oak MSG. get kicked out. Going, yeah, going to the game. We seen Oak getting kicked out of MSG. We still went. Still watch. Spike had problems in the back tunnel. We still watch. We still went. I blame New Yorkers for the Knicks' demise. Jay, what's your take? I can see that. I can see that because especially you know in my heydays, late nineties, early two thousand, going to the clubs, seeing Spreewell, seeing Allen Houston. Those were. Think you'd be like, oh wow, they're playing well, so you get them a slide. Later on, these new cats they coming in and they hanging out. They're not doing the thing they're supposed to be doing. You're not supposed to be respect, <laughs> respecting that. You know, Jeter and Eli, they walk around New York. They on the town. You know, they're untouched. You can't touch them. These other guys, you know, they shouldn't be walking around so comfortable, feeling all happy. You know, spending money here and there when they ain't putting in the work. So that, I agree with that part. I think what the Knicks' problem was was um, always shooting for the the free agent. And I feel like now they got a system in place and it's working a little bit. Like I've never been more happy to cheer for a team under 500 before ever. Like I'm taking, <laughs> this is success. You know, when I saw the over and under at 22, I was like, nah, Tibbs ain't come here to tank. We're going to go over that over. We're going to probably hit 30 wins and probably get into the playing game. But we'll see what happens. But I think what happened with the Knicks is two things. Free agents don't want to come here because of the whole facility situation. The whole way in Westchester. Practice it's, to the ring. Nobody want to do that. Nobody want to do that. Nobody Shout out to the Nets. Yeah. Kev, I don't know if you've been to the Nets facility yet, but if you ever remember yes. that Costco in Sunset Park, the yes, Nets facility, I know exactly. it's right next door. The Nets facility is right next door. So it's literally a 15-minute drive from Barclays. 
So the Nets are doing it right. That's why free agents have no problem going there because you still get that New York atmosphere. That's something the Knicks got to work on in turn of, of trying to get free agents, but build the culture up first. But damn, it's been 25 years, 26 years since the finals appearance. This is, it's getting pretty dire. I'm, I'm, I'm happy you said that, my man. Because, it ain't, um, hold on, hold on. It ain't Cleveland Brown dire yet, though, but I see. <laughs> nah, I nah. think it's worse. I, I think it's worse. I think it's worse. Nah, we, nah. Y'all ain't nah. that bad. I mean, y'all, y'all, were, y'all, y'all were encroaching on it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but, you I know. was sniffing at that. Yeah, yeah, but, but it ain't that bad yet. That now, bad. I will say this. Um, as you alluded to earlier, the Nets have stolen a lot of your Nick shine over the last year or two. Um, actually, I'll see even go, going back to 2012-13 season when they arrived and they picked up Garnett and, and, and Paul Pierce. They've stolen a lot of shine since then. Um, TJ and I have had countless debates countless. regarding the Knicks' return to relevancy. There have been some strides, as I said coming along this season in particular. But what will it take for them to actually contend? Whew. It's going to take uh, development. And I feel like, you know, something that Draymond said in his speech, you know, we never say anything about the teams and the management and giving up on the player instead of develop the player. And I felt like that's what the Nets did great at in terms of when they help um, Russell become an all-star and they developed Levert, they developed Allen and made them great trade assets the Knicks haven't the Knox I, I think he's mentally checked out and I was high, I had so high, much high hopes on him and I hope the same thing doesn't happen to RJ it doesn't seem like it is because Tibbs is there now Tibbs is a great coach a great general and he's definitely the disciplined guy they kind of need so I think that's the Knicks are turning the corner right there but in terms of um that's what it really is it's about the development and culture change that's what's going to take them get them back to relevancy TJ, you got something for him? Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk um, J4 music uh, for a minute music and switch over to the entertainment side. You know, yes, sir. Throughout, throughout the culture, hip hop, ball, always been in it. Come on, Big said it best, man. Either you, you know, hit a wicked jump shot or you sling that mm -hmm. track rock. So in your opinion, um, what have been some of the better athletes that have turned rappers? And I'm going to say this right here. What are some of the better athletes that turn actors? Hmm. Definitely want to say Dame. Dame, I'm, well, Dame just stopped. He just picked up in Dame my head. Dollar. Dame Dollar. He's legit good. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like when Shaq thought he was good with Shaq Fu, Dame is legit good as a rapper. And I would say in terms of actor, don't sleep on LeBron. I think LeBron has a bright future. Minus Space Jam. I think that he should have did something totally different. He left that alone. Should've he should have left, left that alone. But I think LeBron has a little acting itch in him. And he's going to develop and he's going to do fine there. Okay. Um, so hold on, Kev. Hold on, Kev. Uh, and we, I think we had this before, Kev, with a, with a guest. Shaq and the Shaq Fu and the Fu Schnickens was all wrong. Let's be clear. That was a little, right. that was a little too much. Yeah, hold up. Yeah. For us, Jay, for us, that was a little bit of a move, man, because Fu Schnickens was right around the corner. Fu Schnickens. So that, right, right. For, for us, that was a little bit, it was a good look, but go ahead. <laughs> but true or false? Shaq and Big, you can't stop the rain is still the best. That's hard. Sports. That's hard. Rap Absolutely. collabo ever. True or false? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Just want to make that sure. Hard. That was just a litmus test for you, Jay. Make sure you know, <laughs> that was a slow pitch softball, homie. I got to make sure you was going to come correct. <laughs> no doubt. I, I wanted to go back a second because um, you mentioned Braun as an actor. And although I haven't seen um, like an extensive amount of acting from him, it's always been in short stints. Mm hmm I think he's got a better future behind the scenes as a producer, as a director. And, and I, I like, I'd prefer to see him in that aspect as opposed to in front of the camera. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The things he's doing with, um, with, with Silver Springs and, uh, with him and yeah. boys, they're definitely doing some good work, but I think he's going to have that itch to be in the front of the camera, man. I think he makes a good commentator. So if you watch him on a barbershop with him and Maverick. I can see oh, that too, yes. He's a great commentator. He's a great uh, narrator. His voice is strong. I see that. Um, I think people, and people overlook this, man. They may not consider wrestling a sport, but in terms of the best athlete turned actor, The Rock for me is hands down. Um, probably a guy that sticks out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, yeah. but I really see Braun as being a commentator or a narrator, talk show host, segment piece host. Um, that type of vibe. But Jay, I got another question for you in terms of the music, man. Mm -hmm. 
What is your thoughts about the recent spree of us unfortunately losing to a lot of our artists to uh, a gun violent demise? We've seen in the last seven or eight years, um, XXX and we've seen Nipsey. Pop Smoke. Uh, we've seen Pop Smoke. Um, as a writer for The Source and somebody who's been affiliated uh, with MTV, give us your thoughts on that, man. And, and how does hip hop begin to heal, man? Because we're from the era where we've seen the demise of Pac and Big um, and, and, thing, and Big L and we haven't seen the stop yet. So what's your thoughts, man? I think the culture needs to stop taking beefs so seriously. You know, you know, Burr. I mean, for whatever's worth, Drake had the greatest, and this generation's diss track off Meek Mills. And they somehow made up within two years. And I feel like we need to see more of those. We need to see more of that happen. And what happened with Nipsey, what happened with um, Pop, it's unfortunate, but um, it's a lot of, I don't know what to say. I think it's a lot of like, you know, a lot of hating going on. Mm-hmm. Cause like that dude who killed Nip, he legit hate him. For you to shoot him all the time and then kick him afterwards, like, come on, that ain't need to be done. Same thing with Pop. I heard Pop, I heard it was, um, it was some beef that followed him all the way from Brooklyn to Hollywood, which is crazy to me. Like, I feel like people are taking this gang culture way too seriously. The gang life is way too serious and they need to stick to wax, you know, just keep it on tracks and keep it moving from there. Um, since 2016, Jay, we watched um, people misconstrued and not understand the message that Colin Kaepernick was trying to portray by him taking a knee. Um, whether it was alluded to the flag or whether it was alluded to the veterans, we, in hindsight, know that it had all the things to do with police brutality, systemic racism, and racial injustice. Um, in the last year and a half, we watched everything from Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Aubrey, as well as um, George Floyd happen in our country as well. Think about last year and this year, we've seen right now the NBA is doing a lot during Black History Month. Um, but let's take it back to the bubble and even having Black Lives Matter on the court. Uh, should the NBA have joined in the season? Did they do the right thing when Milwaukee said we're not playing for the night? Should they have taken a longer break? Was the WNBA correct? Um, give us your thoughts on the platform, the actions that transpired, and also give us your thoughts on what, what happens next, man. Well, shout out to Colin Kaepernick. Doesn't he seem like a prophet now, looking back at right. everything? Second, he's, second know, coming of Jesus out here. Like, from the moment he did what he did compared to where we at right now, like he, yeah. he warned us, man. He straight up warned us what was going to happen. And, you know, shout out to actually shout out to today's athletes. They're so aware. They're so conscious. You know, they don't care. Like, stand down and not play a game. That couldn't happen in the 90s. That couldn't happen in the early 2000s. But it happened now. And I feel like, you know, someone someone had mentioned to me, like, what happened in um, D.C. a couple weeks ago with the whole storm in the Capitol. Like, that was a test run. Like, somebody's going to come around and be smarter than Trump organize it better and it's going to happen again and i feel like the same thing in terms of the bubble the same thing in terms of the bubble like with the with the players did that was a test run let something else pop off that you know we have clear evidence that should not have happened these guys are going to be like f that we ain't going to play a season like you know shout out to bron bron was like he didn't want to play the bubble to begin with but you know he came around and played so i i, I could I, you know i commit what the Milwaukee Bucks did and what other players follow to shout out the WNBA. Cause I feel like they don't get enough credit. They, did, yeah. they, they really yeah. came through in, in their little wobble and let it be known. Like, you know, Hey, they got a, they got an owner up out of here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So there's definitely strength in numbers. And I think today's athletes are so aware of that. So again, it goes back to Kaepernick. He took that bullet. So we all could walk. And I think, you know, if anything pops up again, it's going to be like, Things are going to get shut down. I completely see that happening. Jay, one more quick question for you, and I'm going to kick it back to Kev. I know he's getting a little older now. Does Colin Kaepernick ever take another snap in the NFL? I prefer he don't. I feel like this is bigger than football at this point. And just to know that the NFL had to cut him a check to be quiet because he was so right about what was going on, that's a win for me. So I don't want him back on the football field. I'd rather him be the martyr. You know, he got paid for it. Live it out that way and continue spreading your message, you know? Say less. Okay. I'm, not, I'm with you on that one, 110%. We're going to switch gears for a minute. Podcast, Box Out. Yeah. You and your homie, Khalil. Tell yeah, us how yeah. that came about and what's the premise of the show, fam? All right. So pretty much, you know, between the swords and um, I met Khalil covering, you know, sporting events. You know, we used to hang out at Barclays, hang out at the garden, doing college basketball, you know, 
I met him, I want to say I met him like four years ago at a Big Ten tournament. And we pretty much had a lot of similarities. And we was like, yeah, let's do a basketball podcast for the tri-state area, predominantly around the Knicks, Nets, you know, Big East, Big Ten, basketball. And it just took off from there. And he'll tell you, man, it's been a long night. It's been a long journey. We've been doing it four years. It's been fun, man. Our, our favorite shows are definitely doing the lottery, especially we're both Knicks fans. So you could imagine when we saw them lotteries, like the Zion, oh man, we both, we, a lot of F words, a lot of F bombs are flying that night. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. T, you got something else for him, bro? The clip is empty, man. It was been a pleasure. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Jay, as always, listen, like I said before, we got to catch up a little more often. It's a pleasure seeing you. TJ, go ahead and do you. Well, listen, man, we want to thank our guy, Jay, for coming on the stoop today. Hey, Jay, we wish you all the best in the future, man. And Jay, before you uh, close out with us, give us some information where our tuners and our viewers can check out the box out, bro. Uh, check out the box out on all platforms, you know, Spotify, Apple, Google Play. Also on YouTube, you know, we also just signed up with um, Hoops TV, so we're, we're happy about that. So we're doing the video format as well. Absolutely. So, you know, we're just doing our thing and let's keep supporting, keep looking out for articles on the source.com. We just launched our streaming service. So we're about to put some movies up there. We're probably about to put Hoop Dreams and a couple other stuff Ooh. in the next couple of weeks. Ooh. So that's Tell up. us more about that. Hold up. Tell us yeah, more about that. Off like that talking. What can you do? What can you divulge? Well, you know, I can tell you, you know, I'm saying we, we're in beta state right now, but we're definitely adding content to the streaming service. So now, you know, we need a Netflix for us, you know, for the culture. So that's what we're trying to do here, you know. So as we're trying to regain our name out there, considering what it was back in the days, a lot of the younger cats don't really understand the, the you know, the source was the Bible of hip hop. The impact. So, yes. so now, you know, my job there is pretty much bring the bring the gaps together in terms of the, you know, the different age groups and you know, things like that. And it's big things are coming down the line, you know, we're bringing back the source awards. That needs to happen. Woo! That's big. So, 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 so that that's what's on the platform as of right now. How's it looking? Like, uh, are we talking about a year, two years? I know COVID obviously throws a monkey wrench in that whole yeah. thing, but Give, about a year, about a year, by the end of the year, you'll see so much content on it. That's what's up. Appreciate the insight. Well, too. I know y'all doing a stream service, but uh, if you need some other shows like <coughs> the Stu, <coughs> and a history in here, it's crazy. We um, definitely about that because you know the sports <laughs> department's on me. So we definitely gonna talk about that. Definitely, definitely. But listen, yeah. to Mr. Jason Corner, we appreciate you, man, for coming on the stoop today. Like I said, much respect to you. We wish you all the best with the box out with the source and so much more, bro. For my guy, Kev P, it's been another great episode of The Stoop. Y'all make sure y'all catch us on our YouTube channel, on our website, thestoophoops.com, and all platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and stay tuned, because we'll be on iHeart coming real soon. Y'all take care, check y'all later. <laughs>